So this is the self-development with tactics. Book. So today um, it is once again going to be a video without a video. Um, it is actually 7 a.m. in the morning. I decided to not work out in the morning but do everything else that I need to do, which also includes recording. And I I honestly am not feeling that well um, or haven't been feeling that well in the past few um, days, I would say. I wouldn't say weeks days and um, due to just a bunch of things and today I thought well um, there's gonna be the next year or it's actually been yesterday yesterday when I was outside walking um, or going for a walk I thought well very soon there's gonna be a next year or the new year um, to some degree I'm looking forward to it since COVID and shit and I'm really Looking forward to to um, whether we have been able to deal with it, what we have done, um, whether we have been able to kind of um, reduce the severity of it, and so on and so on and so on. So I really am looking forward to days where I can just, to really be honest, go out and party. I've never been such a person. I've never done that. Never ever. I've, I've never been a person that says like, wow. I know on a weekend, let's go party and drink. I've never been that person, but somehow I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. And I'm kind of looking forward to meeting new people and meeting with more people. Yeah, but then I thought, well, I'm actually a little bit feared of the new year. I'm fearing the new year because it is new and um, it is also acting as a reminder for certain things which I uh, which I'm working on at the time. And yeah. But so I've found a piece by Ambient Horology and featuring a few people. And I'm going to read that. And I do really hope that if you're having the same problem as I'm having with fearing the future, that, that we both are going to be able to um, sit that through, basically. And... and um, yeah, work on that. Meditations on horology. In a piece about how current human perception of time is analogous to believing the earth is flat, designer Ted Hunt, inspired by the work of Carillo Rovelli, says, To externalize our understanding of time, we simply need to accept that the world is made of events and not things. Everything exists as an event somewhere between the start and the end of the universe. And so everything is impermanent, even the most seemingly permanent things like Mount Everest. Everest is just an event literally unfolding in time. I do not know what religion or philosophy Mr. Hunt follows, if indeed any at all, but this interpretation of the world ties beautifully into the Buddhist nation or notion of impermanence. All things arise, will change and eventually pass away, like spray from a wave on the ocean, we arise from the universe, fly independently for a time and fall back into where we came from. Excessive consideration of one's own mortality without the safety harness of an appropriate philosophical framework can lead to a condition known as chronophobia, literally fear of future, but mainly applied to fear of the passing of time. It is often seen in people with a lot of time on their hands, but the inability to do much with it, such as prison inmates. There is the related chronometrophobia, fear of clocks and watches, though this could be viewed as a variant of a specific type of the general fear of time. A 1989 or 1998, no, 1989 episode of Jonathan Creek features this fear as a central part of the, of the plot. In Time Waits for Norman, a lifelong collector of clocks has married a man has married a man who suffers from chronophobia, though the episode names is condition what though the episode names his condition as temporaphobia, the horologist even notes the irony as she observes her collection, all of which have had to have their hands removed, even the 
turn clock that has been built in the center of the living room. In March 2020, as COVID-19 raced around the world and many countries entered states of lockdown that would be unthinkable in normal circumstances, there was a flurry of jokes and internet memes about time having no meaning as routines disappeared and life changed immeasurably. In only a matter of weeks, it becomes popular to know that today was Blur's Day, as was every other day in a memory pot that our lives had become. In defiance of all conventional wisdom, I elected to give myself a haircut and unfortunately came out looking like a dangerous escaped criminal. The second attempt, a month or two later, was more successful and for a while I sported a rather fetching mohawk. More distressingly, I got to experience firsthand what is possible and even greater irony than a horologist marrying a chronophobe. A horologist becoming a chronophobe. After a few weeks cooped up at home and adjusting to an entirely new lifestyle, I began to feel that time was running away from me, feeling that it was a feeling that was only mag- magnified by the constant ticking of clocks and watches all around my house. Eventually, I was forced to stop or hide them all for several days whilst the malaise passed. I even disabled the taskbar clock on my work laptop. Normally I find the gentle tick of a clock or the sweep of a second hand on a watch comforting and joyous. But for those few days it was generally terrifying to look at anything that indicated time was passing and contemplate my own mortality and what the future might hold in a world where COVID had just smashed through a brick town or brick thrown at a window. Thankfully I was very lucky that within a few days I had just I had adjusted sufficiently to the new normal that I could instead use any feelings of time running away as a reminder to get on, on and live my life whilst my mainspring is still reasonably well wound. Wonder, wondering whether I was the only one in the situation, I threw the question out to Twitter and whilst I haven't yet found anyone who has had the same experience as me, I did get a number of thought-provoking replies. Sue Fullwood, Seth Kennedy and the hashtag WatchNerd all said they didn't feel that they were more aware of time passing but raised other interesting points. Sue says she has always been an obsessive timekeeper and hate being late for anything usually turning up unfashionably early, but also not staying around for long in one place, which stands in stark contrast to my own white rabbit-like lack of punctuality. By the way, I'm also like Sue. I, I tend to really be early at you know at, at things, but in the end I'm, I'm not staying there for that long. Because I just don't want to. I don't know. I, I need to see a lot of things. Apparently. Seth noted he still only had 24 hours a day to fix all the watches in his workshop. And pointed out something that I had always known. But had never really re- registered with me before. Whilst uh, rate testing of modern watches can be approximately with a time graver. There is no substitute for actually running a metha- mechanical movement for an extended test. And indeed in the 19th century... Marine chronometers were kept on test for six months or longer. Calibrating something that measures time requires using it to measure time. Tobias Birch or something noted that he always has se- several precision regulators that he's bringing to time, so focuses on second, seconds rather than hours, and consequently seems to lose hours in the workshop. On the subject of losing hours and telling the time, I was particularly amused by Anna Rose's Anna Rose Kirk's observation. I'm surrounded by clocks, but I tell a time I was on the radio. John W. Cook said he found one second pendulum ticks calming, but generally only run two of his 30 mechanical clocks most of the time. Certainly running all 30 would be a symphony of wheels and pelts. John's final point was that the skeleton clock was the ultimate demonstration of time and motion. I cannot disagree with the notion, staring into the work of any timekeeper gives a visual demonstration of the march of the fourth dimension and a skeleton clock hides nothing from the various or curious viewer. There isn't really a conclusion here that I can wrap up this piece with. A few hundred words and some quoted tweets does not a nirvana inducing revelation make. What? Oh well, anyway. So instead I shall simply hand over to Pink Floyd. Hanging on it, quite desperation is the English way. The time is gone, the sun is over, though it would something 
though I had something more to say. Yeah. As it is often the case, you know, often uh, things pass, things go over, but we actually want to say something else. And But I also want to give you the correct, I guess, at least, um, not explanation, but definition of chronophobia is defined as the persistent and often irrational fear of the future or the fear of passing time. Since time can be considered as a specific object, chronophobia falls under the category of specific phobias. The word chronophobia is derived from Greek chronos, meaning time, and phobos, meaning fear. Yeah, and now a little bit of a of a thought there. I'm indeed feared of the future. Um, there is there's a lot of things that I neglect to do quite and that are always on my mind. And there is a lot of ways I'm overwhelmed by what I'm doing every day quite. Um, to really be honest, like to really, really honestly be honest. <laughs> um, I feel like, I don't know what I feel like. I feel like doing more. I feel like using my life for more things and 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 and, and overall living a better life and, and not being unhappy or depressed or in some sort of neutral state, not happy state, but neutral state, also not negative, but neutral state all the time. It's I don't know, like not all the time, of course. There's some moments in my day where I'm happy and I don't want to be like, okay, I'm so depressed because I'm not. I really am not. But um, it's, it's not been that difficult for me. Really not. And I do dearly hope that it is not the case for you and that you're feeling good and that you're feeling fine and that everything is okay with you. And yeah. Some things that, that often remind myself of the good in life and then... And, and, some sort of these things is stoicism. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it is what it is, man. I maybe I just need to rest a bit, also physically and mentally. But I think that I've done that. Maybe it's actually only about the physical thing because I, I tend to, overdo it with, working out, I guess, and doing too much and. Neglecting to see that I, I, and or just actually seeing, but neglecting to do something about um, me overdoing it. But yeah, um, since I need to go to work in an hour, actually more, an hour and a third, uh, and a quarter. Um, I don't know, like, it's difficult times, I am... Weirdly, not looking forward to the lockdown that, that we're going to be in in Austria. Um, to some degree, I think it is a cool thing because I guess at least that I am then not having to work that much. Um, which could also lead to me being bored at work, which is also something that I don't want to have or don't want to have. But yeah, anyway, it's... It's a... It, it, it really is a strange time and, and, and quite every single day of the week I think, wow, I really am looking forward to the weekend and on the weekend I'm I'm just pacing around. I'm just doing so much. I'm just obsessing over so many things. I'm thinking about so much. I I don't know. Like It's not the place that I want to be in for too long that I am in at this point in time. Uh, yeah, that's it. And I shouldn't be, and I'm also not going to be in this place. I know that eventually, um, since I had those periods and, and such periods in my life before, I am going to pass this time. And I am going to sit through the storm, even though I don't really know what the storm is all about. You know, It's interesting. I think it, it, it really ties into... Maybe there's just some things that I have never kind of been able to, to work on. Maybe these things are now coming like, wow, work on me, motherfucker. You know, this is your head. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
whispering and, and talking that, that silently is definitely not the best thing for my voice. But anyway, I really hope that you're fine. And so I wish you the best health of happiness and all success. And also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered. Which basically means your legacy. And basically means just being a nice person and then being remembered <clears throat> as a nice person. Which is a pretty freaking cool thing. But yeah, um, three other things that I have you are why are you here? What are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is again and as well a pretty cool thing. And of course, I've also forgotten about um, my, 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 my power bank, even though I thought about it, but I've slept enough. But to be honest, don't really give a fuck about that because I often enough feel that when I don't sleep that much then there is at least then there is at least something going on somehow like weirdly me being able to uh, complain about that but yeah I don't know like things are fucked but things are not as fucked as I might be assuming they are and might be thinking they are this is what it's what's going on actually. But yeah, I'm gonna end the episode there. So one last thing that I have for you is, what could you essentially say to another person that is indeed gonna change their life? Because I totally believe that we all can say something. And with that being said, bye bye and have a nice day and life and everything. Bye bye.